Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Files. In today's video, I thought I would share some tips and tricks that you can use if you're trying to apply wallpaper to your mood board designs. So in this case, this is the pattern that I'm going to be working with. Uh, basically, uh, the first thing that I would probably want to do is um, I want to get a sense for what the overall scale of this wallpaper is. So a good idea is to always just click the view details button once you've selected the item in your mood board. Click the view details button that's going to show in the bottom left hand corner. You'll be able to click the shop link to pop over to the vendor site. And then here you'd be able to find the overall dimensions for the product. And that should help give you a sense for, you know, eyeballing this into place to make sure that you're roughly getting it at the correct scale. Now, once you have your um, wallpaper image kind of scaled down to the size that you want, the next thing that you're going to want to do here is to duplicate your wallpaper um, image and then we're going to line it up directly below. So I'm just going to use my zoom feature here to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm up to. I'm basically just using my left, right and up, down arrows to slide things into place here. And I'm basically trying to match up the pattern on the wallpaper. Now, in some cases where it's uh, cropped nicely so that it will perfectly repeat, you'll be able to easily do that. There are definitely going to be cases where it's not going to be as easy to match up the pattern because the overall image doesn't have a perfect repeat. So you might find that in those cases you're seeing kind of like just an edge where the, where the pattern isn't matching up perfectly. There's not much that you can do there. So basically you would just kind of want to line up your wallpaper, get it to scale, and then it'll roughly give your client an idea of what this is going to look like. In my case, this particular piece does perfectly, uh, does perfectly match up. So what I'm going to do here is I can see that there's just a thin gap here where it's not quite meeting uh, the edge of the baseboard. If it was a larger gap, then I would actually duplicate another paint swatch and I would add it in. In this case, I'm just going to select both. And by selecting both, I'm going to essentially just click on uh, one of the paint swatches and then I'm going to hold down shift and click on the other one. And then I'm just going to scale up both until it comes to the uh, top edge of the baseboard. Now that I've done that, I'm going to duplicate this group. When I duplicate the group, you're going to notice that it's only got one selected. So just again, hold down shift and then click on the top one. You're going to shift it over and we're going to line these ones up as well. And we're basically going to repeat that process all the way across here. So we're going to duplicate. I'm going to hold down shift, select the top one, shift it over, and we're going to just keep lining everything up. And I'll do that one last time. We're going to duplicate it, hold down shift, and then come all the way over here. Now, um, in this case, I have more than I need here. So I'm just going to align my uh, wallpaper swatches here and I want to crop off this section. So I'm going to start with the bottom one and I can see the corner edge here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the crop tool and then I'm going to slide this into the corner edge and we'll apply that so that it's cutting off right on the corner and we'll do the same thing for the top one. Okay, so now that we've basically got that aligned, the next thing that I want to do here is, and I'll just zoom out so you can see what this is looking like. So we've got our wallpaper all the way along the back wall here. The next thing that we have to do here is we need to add it to the side wall. So in order to make sure that I'm distorting this correctly, the first thing I want to do is go into the visual elements library and I want to bring out the perspective grid because that's going to help provide me with the guidelines that I need to make sure I'm distorting everything on the correct angle. Now with your perspective grid, let me just zoom out here for a second. What you essentially want to do is you're going to extend this beyond the edges of your uh, empty room image, which you can see I've done here in the back. So I'll just remove this one that's in the front. I'm going to click on the one that I've already added here and bring it forward. And you can see here that what I've done is I've basically placed my perspective grid so that I am making sure the perspective grid lines are running along the same angle as the wall for my empty room image. It does not have to be perfect, so don't worry about getting too fussy and making sure that one of the grid lines is perfectly in line where the ceiling is matching the wall. That is not the goal here. You just need to make sure that it is basically kind of roughly going along the same angle and that will do the trick. Once you have your grid in place, what you want to do is you're going to push it back 
You're going to bring it forward one layer so that it is in front of the empty room image, but behind all of the other uh, wallpaper and decor items that you have in your design board. And then you're going to lock it into place so that it does not move on you. So now that we've done that, the next thing I want to do here is I'm going to take one of my larger paints or not paint swatches, wallpaper swatches. I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to line it up on the side wall here. So when I'm using my left, right and up, down arrows, you'll see that these red grid lines are going to uh, come in whenever you are perfectly aligned. Now, in order to distort this correctly on the side wall, I'm going to actually take the, I'll go into the image adjustments. I'm going to take the transparency right down because I want to be able to see the grid lines through the wallpaper so I can make sure that I'm distorting this correctly. And again, I'm just going to zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. So now that I've got this transparent, I'm going to go into the distort tool, click that, and I'm going to take this point right here and bring it all the way up to meet the edge of the uh, wall where it meets the ceiling. So when you're ever you're distorting something, the thing that you always want to keep in mind here is that you want to keep your vertical lines 100% vertical and the uh, horizontal lines, those are the lines that you're going to be distorting. So in this case, you can see here I've got this point. I need to bring this one up so that it's uh, following along the same kind of angle as the perspective grid. So we need to be kind of halfway between these two. I'm going to say right about there looks about accurate. And then what I'll do is I'll apply this and I'm going to bring back the image um, or I'll bring back the transparency. So I'm just going to make it 100% now. Now, this is covering the window. I don't want you to worry about that right now because it's a lot more complicated if you're trying to create a, a, like a, um, a wallpaper swatch that's going to go across the top and down the sides and across the bottom. This is going to be a much better process for you and I'll show you how you're going to bring that window back after we have all the wallpaper in. So let's keep going and what we'll do here is we're just going to grab another one of the uh, paints or the wallpaper swatches that I have on this back wall. We're going to duplicate that and we're going to bring it over and we're going to do the next one. Now I keep grabbing one of the originals because I want it perfectly it's like square on. I don't want to take something that's already been distorted and then try to distort it further. So always go back and grab one of the originals and then again we're going to line this up. And once I have this lined up, the next thing I want to do here is I'm going to take the transparency down. I'm going to distort this and we're only going to, we're going to keep our vertical lines 100% vertical here. So I'm going to actually overlap this one a little bit and we're going to take this one all the way down. Right about here, I'm going to say. Okay, apply that and we can bring this back in. Now. I'm going to repeat the same uh, steps for this last little bit here. I only need a tiny sliver here. So again, we'll take one of these. Now, when I scale this one up, here's what's important as well. You want to make sure, let's just uh, grab this bottom one a second. I just want to take the transparency down. Okay, perfect. What I want to do here is I'm going to scale this one up to match the height of the uh, wallpaper piece that's here. So we're going to scale this up. To this point so that our scale is accurate the pattern is lining up here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the excess off I don't need all of this extra wallpaper so I'm just going to come to the edge of my empty room image apply it and then I can uh, again transparency down and distort and then all the way up to the ceiling here and roughly we're just trying to match up the angle. So I'm just trying to keep kind of half, not really halfway, but in between here. So about there, I'm going to say about there. And then we're going to apply it. And then we're going to do the last, uh, we're going to do the same thing for the last piece here. So I can bring this one back as well. And then we'll take another piece. Um, we're going to duplicate it, line it up. And then uh, remember to always increase your scale so that you're matching the same scale of the one that's just beside it. You're going to crop the excess off that you don't need. Right about there. And then we're going to take the transparency down again and we're going to distort this and we're just basically closing out the gaps here. 
just like that. Apply it, bring your transparency back to full, and let's just zoom out here. Okay, now um, we need to bring back our window. So what we wanna do here is we're gonna double click on the grid that we locked into place here. We're gonna unlock it. We're gonna push it all the way back to the bottom layer so that we have access to the other um, layers within the design. We're gonna, let's see if I've done, okay, yeah. So we're gonna click on the empty room image. Um, I'm gonna duplicate that empty room image. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the background removal tool. I'll switch to the manual remove background option. I'm gonna zoom right into this. And what we're gonna do here is we're basically just gonna cut out the windows and place them over top of all, the, all of the wallpaper pieces that we added to that wall. So that'll be a lot easier than having to create wallpaper swatches that go across the top and down the sides and across the bottom. It's gonna be a lot cleaner too. So all we need to do here is just click our way around this particular window. And then we'll cut this out and we're gonna add this on top. So we'll save this and I'm just gonna zoom out here. There it is. Okay, now I can't see where the window is. So again, I'm just gonna take one of those paint swatches or the uh, wallpaper swatches and bring the transparency down so I can see where that window should go. We'll zoom into this so you can see what I'm up to. Line this up. Use your left, right, and up, down arrows to get everything perfectly in place. And once you have that, you can bring this back to the full transparency. And then that will allow you to basically um, add wallpaper to any walls where you've got doors or windows or any sort of structural element that you need to work around. One last tip that I would actually share with you just to make it feel a little bit more realistic. Um, I would try, I'm just gonna select the all the wallpaper um, swatches that I added to this particular wall here. And I'm gonna use the image adjustment tool and I'm gonna take the brightness down to 80%. So we're making this wall just a little bit darker than the, the wall at the far end here, just so it feels like we're, we're getting a little bit more depth within the space. So that's something else that you could try. Um, but essentially those would be the steps that you would take to add wallpaper to your mood board designs. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you do have any questions about creating full room designs uh, using the mood board tools within design files, always feel free to reach out to us on the live chat. We're happy to help. Thanks for watching.